you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and then you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. For more than 2,000 years, the commission and promise of the Lord Jesus has resonated in the hearts and minds of believers all over the world. And in our day, God is pouring out His Spirit anew to prepare humanity for a fresh proclamation of the gospel. Now is the time of awakening, of conversion, of transformation of every human heart and mind. Yet each day, Christians are confronted with situations that compromise their faith and undermine even the most basic truths. Who is the person of Jesus? How can we come to know Him in a personal way? What does it mean to live as His disciple? Where is He calling us to serve Him? God loves each one of us and is calling us to make an active decision for Him in our lives. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live holy lives and take up His mission in the world. These are the choices we face. Welcome to another week of The Choices We Face. You know, God is doing so many wonderful things throughout the world and touching so many people's lives. And we've been doing our television production for about the last seven years at a studio near the Detroit Metro Airport in New Boston, Michigan, at a place called Casper Studios. And we've gotten to know the camera people and the directors and the makeup people over the years. And we've just been inspired by the, the Christian crew that really runs this studio. And one of the women we've met here is uh, Sonia Casper, who's a, a wife of the owner, Walter Casper. And Sonia does a lot of things around here. She does makeup. Peter and I have had makeup put on for weeks and weeks and weeks, for years and years and years by Sonia. She does a great job. She doesn't embarrass us. It's not too heavy. If we accidentally don't get it taken off and walk out into the world, we're not going to look too weird. She's understanding of our concerns in that regard. And uh, she also does camera work. But she's a, she's a wonderful Christian woman who has a wonderful story to tell about, about what God has done in our life. And Sonia, thank you so much for being willing to be on this side of the camera for a change. Thank you. I feel blessed to be able to do this for the Lord. Yeah, and Peter Herbeck, you know, is with us today. So let's just start at the beginning. You were born. Where were you born? And then what happened? Born in Detroit. I'm a child of a Holocaust survivor. Oh. Um, my mom was uh, also in the war in Berlin at the time. And... Um, they came here, and uh, I was born in 1950 here in Detroit. And um, my mom and dad, shortly after their marriage, split. And um, my dad's only requirement was that I was to be enrolled in um, an Orthodox yeshiva Hebrew school. So you're born to you're you're Jewish, and you were born to Jewish parents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, then went to Hebrew school till about grade four and uh, moved out of the area into a um, completely Gentile neighborhood and so was put into public school and there became fast friends with the kids in the area and um, one in particular Catholic girl and she was sharing her faith with me and always interested in God myself you know I was the type of child that would lay in bed at night and say God, if you're really up there, you know, just knock on the ceiling and then I'll really believe, you know. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. if he would have knocked, I would have had a heart attack. But I, you know, was asking him nonetheless to reveal himself yeah, to me and then wonderful. went on with my life and went off kind of in my own way, interested in astrology and numerology and palmistry and all the dark things, mm -hmm. you know, just, I don't know, it was the age of Aquarius. It was, you mm -hmm. know, 60s yeah. and got into that and got pregnant at the age of 16 and gave up a child and um, just went into an immoral lifestyle and, and dated a gangster in the mafia, high-ranking um, mobster, for five years and um, went through a lot of soul-searching. And by the time I was in my early 20s, I just wanted to kill myself. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. felt like that lifestyle and the parties and the drunkenness and you know, whatever it all held caused me to just, like, be fearful at night. Mm -hmm. I felt like God wasn't there for me, and I saw shadows in the night just, like, hanging over my bed, and I was having, really having some things happening with me that were fairly demonic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, the Jesus movement was happening at that time, and I remember no one really proselytizing me or telling me about the Lord, but just... One morning, we, I decided with my girlfriend to go to, uh, in the, it was in the fall in September, to go to the cider mill. And I said, why don't we go to the cider mill and we'll come visit my dad. 
and we were driving past the church and I said, um, you know, Linda, I said I would have always wanted to go in that church. Lately I'm having this draw to go to a church and she said, well, we should go. You know, I went this morning to that church, in hmm. fact, and she started telling me that she knelt down and said the sinner's prayer that morning and she said, now my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hmm. And I started to cry and she said, what's the matter? I said, because you're going and I'm not. Oh. Mm -hmm. I knew. I knew I wasn't going to go. Mm. And she said, well, don't worry about it. You know, after we see your dad, we'll go stop at the church and, and they're going to have a service tonight. Mm. And it was the most boring thing I'd ever heard in my life about <laughs> the ephod that the priest was wearing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those stories, yeah. Stones the vestments on his of the Old oh, Testament priest. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. No altar call, nothing. Yeah, and yeah. So she introduced me to a friend that was there at the church. Her, her friend from high school, his mom was there, and she said, Mrs. Stewart, this is Sonia. Sonia, this is Mrs. Stewart. And I said, you know, they, I wanted to meet Jesus tonight, and no altar call. And she said, stay here. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. So gave me audience with the pastor from, the, uh -huh. from that church. And he said things to me like, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross? And I said, yes. Do you believe that he died for your sins? Yes. Do you believe? And he started going through all this mm. process. And then he got to the part, do you believe that he's born of the virgin? And I thought, well, he's God. He could do anything he wants. Yeah, that's, okay. a, good, that's okay. a good principle. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> if he wants to be born of a virgin, okay, he was born of a virgin. I can believe that. Uh -huh. And the minute I said that, the most powerful anointing hit me and I began to weep profusely mm. Mm. and a heat hit me from the top of my head and went down my whole body and I was out of control I was just like clearly out of control and I I couldn't believe that I was losing it like that and he said do you know what you've done and I said no what did I do and he said you've invited the Holy Spirit to come live in your heart and now he's taking up residence, mm. and all your past is behind you now. Oh, wow. And I could picture like when I was a little child that used to have that little writer and pull the slip up and it would clear the slate. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like sure. Just yeah. was that, that was it, it was gone. And I felt like the love of God, it was clearly the love of God because I had never experienced such a washing of my soul. Mm. And um, I was never the same after that. Isn't that amazing? Like, like, you were raised an Orthodox Jew, but you were searching for more connection with God, and then you got off the track into the dark stuff and the dark lifestyle, and then you just kind of got this desire going past the church to, to go into this church, and your friend shared what happened to her, and you just felt like the, like the Lord was just leading you and, you, and nobody had really explained things to you, or nobody had... <laughs> told you about what it meant to be a Christian or anything, and you had sort of heard about Jesus and had some idea of who he was, and but you were ready to to open your life to Jesus. That is so wonderful, and so wonderful of God, and so wonderful of you, and just really great. There's an amazing, there's an amazing testimony in the whole thing in that, you know, that's the Lord is just looking for a humble heart, yeah. a simple yeah. heart. A heart that's open and yeah. thirsting. And it's not very complicated. It's, it's not complicated. Simple. It's not. And to say, you know, I need you, God. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. broken. I, yeah. I don't have all the answers. I want to know the truth. I want to, and just open your heart. That's what you did. And he came and he made residence. And sometimes yeah. it doesn't even come in the form of clear concepts. It comes by some kind of tug or urging or some impulse or some, some, some yearning or just some drawing to li yeah. like happen. You know, it doesn't even have concepts with it, but there's just... You're drawn to want to go yeah. kneel, in, she wanted to go yeah. kneel down in that church. Yeah. And that was one of the things you said yeah. to your friend, which opened the door. And you know what? There's it, another sign of the humility. I mean, to actually say to a friend in the car, you know, to reveal the secret, I want to go in and kneel down in that church and pray. I mean, that takes something when you're yeah. not sure exactly where your friend's yeah. at. Yeah. It takes humility, it takes honesty, it takes yeah. transparency. And that's what the Lord loves. He loves that transparency and He'll bless that. You know, you know I, I have to say, that one of those things you said I could really identify with because when I was a student at Notre Dame, I was caught up in the confusion of the 60s too and some dark things. And at a certain point, I really felt demonic forces after me. You know, I just felt dark things. And I feel like almost like the Lord let me see the reality of the darkness and made me scared of what was really there. 
that kind of opened me to coming to the Lord. You know, a, a friend invited me to make a retreat, you know, three months before I graduated, and I really came to, to surrender to Christ and, and really to be saved from the darkness. You know, it was a confusion that, you know, I don't know if I'd still be alive today if I didn't meet the Lord. I don't know if I'd be an addict. I don't, I, it was just, it was, there was darkness around that was after me, and I just was so grateful to God that He, he saved me from the darkness. He saved me from those dark things mm -hmm. that are coming after you and are trying to envelop you and to draw you into it. And praise the Lord yes. that Jesus saved us. Yes. It wasn't a one-time thing. Yeah. It was, I was haunted by these things even after I came yeah. to know the Lord, too. Yeah. And um, it's just like they did not want to let go of my life. Right, right. And they weren't was, happy about what you were doing. No, they wanted me. They yeah. wanted me. They wanted to use me. Yeah. They had had me on a path that was so broad, broad and wide yeah. that I, it was like every avenue down that broad, wide path I was going. And it, was, it makes you feel like you have some form of excitement. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like I keep saying I was in the fast lane going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, and the illusion of meaning, the illusion of, of happiness, the illusion of life, you yes. know. But it's really a distraction, it's something distracting you from seeing the underlying darkness and where it's really leading. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So tell, tell us more what happened. Okay, what, you know, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a first step. First and a step. really important step. Very. What, 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 what happened? Well, following that, I, and I must say, I had um, just previous to that gotten married. And uh, my husband was a non-believer, and uh, I, was, I was going through a lot of trials and tribulations with him to the point where it was affecting the children in the household, and, and um, the police were involved, and yeah. a lot of um, violence and you know, emotional abuse and physical abuse. Yeah. And yet, at the same time, simultaneously that this was happening, there were 17 girls meeting in my home, coming to know the Lord. And week by week that we're coming by and more were coming in and people were getting saved, healed, delivered, set free. So you, 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 you offered yourself to Jesus to help reach other people even while you were still very much a Christian under the first stages of construction in a way, you know, like, and things weren't all sorted out in your life, yeah. but God was already using you to help others. Truly. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And out of that, um, there was a church that had just opened up and they were knocking on doors and and I was so leery about setting all these people out of my home into a place that I hadn't been led to myself and there was so much happening and we had such wonderful communion with the Lord and it was really just a prayer group you know we didn't know enough about the word we'd open it up and say you know read it and say what do you mean here God and yeah. the presence of the Lord would show up yeah. and start opening up the Word yeah. of God to us yeah. and all these women they were worried about their husbands not knowing Christ and a lot of them came in and wound up going into the ministry all but my husband well wow. wow. so 14 years after marriage it dissolved for me mm -hmm. and I went on uh, went into another life and mm -hmm. and uh, and it continued but these these times of the Lord and my house being filled with women and children and and just growing in Christ was truly amazing to me how fast you would just hardly even talk about Jesus and they'd be weeping I know the Lord has given me some kind of gift because there were many people that came and sat in my chair to get their hair done and instantly I would know what was going on in their life yeah. I mean, a heroin addict would sit down. I never knew that he was doing drugs. Yeah. And I would say, you're doing heroin. I knew it instantly. You're doing heroin. You know, I forgot to mention when I introduced Sonia that besides helping out at the TV studio, you run your own business called 911 Hair. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, Hair 911. Yeah, so if anybody's having a hair emergency near Detroit Metro <laughs> Airport, just go to 911 Hair and Sonia will help you. She may help you even with more than your hair. She may say a prayer for you and... and yeah. It, yeah, and it so, was happening. So you found that happening with people coming to your hair studio? They would bow their head, start to cry, receive the Lord, and and just really have uh, awesome conversions. I mean, this was just happening in frequency all through the 70s and 80s, and I was, like, amazed at how God was using me, mm -hmm. you know, in spite of myself. Yeah, yeah, despite of, you're still a Christian under construction, and God's still working through you. He's working on you, and he's working through you. Yeah. And that's how it is for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's a temptation to, to think I gotta I've gotta get it all organ I gotta yeah. get myself out of this pit. I gotta yeah. get myself out of the bondage or whatever that I'm in and then present myself just right to God and then he can make something happen yeah. instead of saying, No, he's gonna meet you right 
exactly where you are. And there's no place, you know, the famous line, there's no pit so deep that God's not deeper yeah. still. He yeah. goes down into those, and all he's asking is, please take my hand. Yeah. Take my hand, I'll lead you out. Yeah. I'll get you out of you this. You don't have to have it all together right. to come and he, to and me. You don't have to know how it's going to happen. Yeah. You just have to keep your eyes on that hand and take that hand and just be willing to go wherever he leads. Yeah. And he'll take you out and he'll make the changes that need to happen. He'll put you in the right relationships. He'll put you in the right situations. He'll give you the deliverance and healing. He'll give you whatever. He'll lead you precisely where he wants you to go. Yeah. You know? Well, and, let's take a little break right now. And when we come back, Sonia, we want to hear the rest of the story. The decision to have an abortion not only affects that moment in your life. Kristen Gordon. It affects many precious moments to come. I now pronounce you man and wife. Please remember, where there's life, there's hope. A message from Priests for Life. We're talking to Sonia Casper, who for so many years has been serving us here with our television production. She's our makeup person. She's a camera woman. And she's offered to this time share her own story about how God has worked in her life and rescued her from darkness, led her into the light and into the truth. And Sonia, maybe you could just fill in a little bit more. I know that that marriage didn't work out but somehow God used it to prepare you for, for more. He did. He did. There were such times that I, 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 I hadn't broken free yet of something, mm -hmm. and, and God knew whatever it was, and, and I was going to come into a deeper walk with him. I remember that distinctly, and I remember not even knowing how to pray. I mean, I was sit, sometimes rocking on the edge of the bed saying, the Our Father, you know, and he was saying, stop stop you know you're going into the edge of the lake of self-pity and if you step in I can't pull you out just don't go there yeah you know and, and I would stop mm -hmm. and listen to him because yeah. it was almost like he had to be firm with me yeah I was so emotional but yeah. the, the one time that I remember prior to the marriage ending that did set me free was the time that I had been on the carpet before the Lord with my face down and I, I asked God to reveal himself to me. I need more than what the church is telling me. I need more of what anybody could tell me. I need more of you. And I clearly felt a presence so great that I, I did pick my face up from the carpet momentarily to look around to see if maybe someone was standing in the room. Yeah. And I heard that internal voice so loud resonate in me saying, if you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. Mm. And I said, I am seeking you with all my heart. What do you want from me? And then a break at brokenness came. It just broke me entirely. And I, I knew that I, I was never going to be the same after that. I mean, there was so many things happening. Something had to occur. And shortly after that, I was led into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave you that more that you needed yes. to... To be stronger in to be Him, strong. and to be more stable in, in him. him. Yeah, yes, yeah, in Him. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now I know that the Lord eventually led you to a Christian man, yes. and that you're in a, a committed Christian marriage right now. How, how, did, how did that all happen? And how I, that, I was how's working, it all going? Working in um, the church and doing the makeup and the hair for television ministry, you know, much like yours. And um, I remember Walt coming in, and I just thought. You know, this I, he's a wonderful guy. I should yeah. set him up with my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they could make a nice couple. Yeah. So I told my girlfriend, you should go out with him. Perfect. You're perfect for each other, you know? And no, she was saying, no, he's out with me. He's asking questions about you. I said, okay. So <laughs> um, <laughs> we all became just friends, you know, initially. Yeah. And then we started dating. That's we a went good way for us to start, isn't yes, it? Yes, friendship. friendship. Friendship in Christ. Yeah. Christian friendship. friends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And a deep friendship to the point where. I don't think I ever had had a relationship with a man that was a cerebral, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know. That was person to person, person rather to person. Than going right yeah, to, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't, yeah. you know, I didn't. Yeah. And it was wonderful to be able to share from the heart and share from your mind and, yeah. sh and have a bond spiritually. Yes, yes. You know, because yeah. I was so forewarned before not to be equal, unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. And I just let that warning yeah. just pass by me. What does that mean, me. unequally yoked? What does that mean? Not to bond yourself with anything that that would be non that yourself would not be spiritually 
the same in. That you couldn't share your, your relationship yeah. with Christ with. You yes. Yeah. Don't get connected with somebody that you're going to get, not going to be able to share yeah. journey to Christ if together. Jesus is the, if Christ is the deepest thing in your yeah. life, yeah. don't bring in yourself into a relationship that is you meant can't. to go deep, yeah. but you can't go to the deepest yeah. part of you because right. it just stops you. Right. There's that kind right. of unequal. Uh, okay. yeah. Yes. And so most of our conversations revolved around God and, 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 and what hope we had for the future and, and um, it felt right. It, mm -hmm. You know, he was in ministry and I was in ministry and, and uh, then the relationship continued yeah. for a number of years and, and now uh, together, we've been together 17 years uh, yeah. dating and married and 11 years of marriage. Yeah, that's great. Well, praise the Lord. You know, I, I just wish a lot of young women could, could hear and young men could hear what you just said because Honestly, so many people get emotionally and physically involved, like they put the, the cart before the horse. I mean, yeah. friendship is, it really has to come first. Even if there's physical attraction, there, there's got to be a friendship. There's got to be finding whether one shares values together and shares, you know, shares the Lord together, really. And it's so much more complicated and it doesn't work out so often when the, the emotional and physical comes first and not, not yeah. the friendship. and the. Hey, you, you young people out there, or you old people, or whoever, you know, you single people looking for a spouse, I mean, take it slow and, 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 and wait on the Lord and develop friendships first and, yeah, yeah. just like Sonia when, said. When you were sharing, Sonia, about being uh, with your face on the carpet and just hearing the Lord say, seek me, you know, seek me, it took me back to 1979 when I was in, the, in college and... I was I had given my life to the Lord more fully at that point, and I was still you know searching Lord what we want me to do. And one day while I was praying, I just felt the Lord come, and like get really close to me and right in my face. He said, "I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a principle for the rest of your life that I want you to live by. This is it." And then He said, "Open your Bible." And I turned to Matthew six, and it says, "Seek first the kingdom of God mm. and His way of holiness." That's it and everything will be added unto That's you. It. And I felt like you said, Peter, this is the nugget. This is it. This is your life principle, and it will come true if you give your whole heart to it, not just an occasional thought, but your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. I promise you it will come true. And it just stuck in me. It was like the lights went on, and I just knew it was the Lord. I said, this is it. Yeah. I don't need a five-point plan from some big speaker yeah. from wherever. You this don't need a theology the, degree. Right. This is the plan of life big, right big, here. Long this books. is it. Yeah. And it's that real. It's exactly. not just a word on a page. No. It's a promise from a person who's 100% committed to me, and nothing can stop him. Exactly. You know? And so... It was I heard it the same way. Yeah. I heard it the same way, except I, I always say it when he said that to me, not now and then, not once in a while, not only when you need me because things are bad, but with your whole heart. Perfect. With yeah. your way whole heart. You know, I think we should just go with that. Yeah. You know, I think the Lord's really bringing out a message here today, and it has to do with our whole heart. The, the word that the Lord spoke to Sonia when she was on the ground crying out in desperation. The Lord said, when you seek me with your whole heart, then I will let myself be found by you. Peter here, the, word, the Lord said the same word to Peter in a different form. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added as well. I know you're worried about all these other things. You're a human being. I know you need these things. You know, you don't got to wonder about whether I know you need these things. I know you need these things, but I'll tell you, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his holiness, these other things will be added as well. And I just think there's a real clear message from the Holy Spirit to everybody who's listening right now, everybody who's with us right now, no matter what your circumstance, no matter how desperate, how confused, how lonely, how depressed, how, how whatever, how happy the Lord has a word for you. When you seek me with your whole heart, then I will let myself be found by you. And, you know, all of us have sought the Lord in different kinds of ways. And I think the Lord's asking us to up it a notch today. He's asking us to, from the greater depths of our being, from the deepest reaches of our heart, to get down on our face if we're in our living room right now, or to cry out if we're in our car or wherever we are, to pull over and go into a church and cry out to the Lord. You don't have to have complicated words or involved prayers. You just have to say, Lord, 
I need you, I want you. Help me in my weakness, help me in my confusion, help me in my desperation. It doesn't matter how awful your past has been, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made, it doesn't matter how much mess you've made, a new day could start for you today if you seek him with all your heart. He knows our weakness. He knows we don't have theology degrees, most of us. He knows we don't have complicated understandings of this or that. He knows our heart, and he loves us so much. He loves us so much, and he wants so much to be close to us and so much to be near to us and so much to let us experience that perfect love that cast out fear. Oh, there's lots of reasons to be afraid. Fear of the future, fear of the past, fear about us, fear about our relationships, fear about our health, fear about our money, fear about being left alone, fear about rejection, fear about our bodies, oh, just fears that there's something wrong with us that never can be fixed right, and fears that we're just too weird or too messed up. And God in his immense tender love wants to draw near and wants to say, be still, and know that I am God, and know that I am love, and know that I am for you and with you. I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who has a plan for your life and can all start again today. Peter Herbeck's written a booklet called To Walk by the Spirit, and we'd like to offer it to you as a little help in seeking the Lord with your whole heart, as a little help in seeking first the kingdom of God and letting the healing, merciful, forgiving love of Christ come into your heart. Call the 800 number or write to the address on the screen and we'll send it right to you. Till next week, this is Ralph Martin and Peter Herbeck and Sonia Casper. And we thank you so much, Sonia, for sharing the tender love of God who came to you in your need and mercy and cleansed you and set you free over a period of years. We'll see you next week. Is the Holy Spirit active in your life? Do you feel you're walking alone in the world? Jesus said, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Do you see his hand in your daily experience? Today, for many who have been baptized, the Spirit is a doctrine to be believed in, not a reality of personal experience. St. Paul tells us that we are called to walk in the Spirit and to live in the Spirit. Every baptized person is given the gift of this unique relationship with God. Hi, I'm Peter Herbeck, and I'd like to help you discover and experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your daily life. I've written a booklet called To Walk by the Spirit, and I'd like to make it available to you free of charge just for the asking. Call 1-800-282-4789 or go to renewalministries.net.